Hello everybody and welcome to the United Stand. This is your latest Manchester United transfer news where we talk about all the latest Manchester United transfer news and give it that real fan opinion. I feel like I haven't done a transfer daily in ages but it's bloody hot. It is very hot in the UK at the moment even at this time and I shouldn't be wearing this but it is hot and we've got to do the hotter meter which people ask me to do but let's fly into it because there's a lot of hot breaking news around Manchester United and transfers as well is that coincidental now the tour is over we'll see a bit of speed around the transfer news less than two weeks to go now we're actually got less than two weeks to go two weeks last night it closes but big headline news we're going to talk about Fernandez. we're going to talk about Harry Maguire but let's just start off with Nicola Pepe because this is a little bit late news really he doesn't feature on on any of the images here and he's certainly not on the hotter meter because I just don't think we'll sign Nicola Pepe. Carlo Ancelotti yesterday confirming that Nicola Pepe's agent was at the Napoli team hotel discussing a move yesterday. De Marzio late last night saying that you know confirming that but also that Manchester United are interested. I'll tell you what De Marzio hasn't been that reliable around United for a long time but when it comes to Italian news, he's quite good. Let's hope there's something in it, because I tell you what, if Nicola Pepe is available, you wouldn't say no. I love Greenwood. I love Chong. I think we've got some really good young players coming through. But you know what? I've always said we need a bit of experience in the club as well. And at 24 and the goals he scored for Lille, Nicola Pepe would bring us you know, some ready-made talent for those players to you know, maybe go on loan or work off. So I'd be all for it. But when the agents admittedly with Napoli, it's looking favourable for Napoli, Napoli. Can United do anything about it? I don't know. Let's keep an eye on that one because something could happen. It could happen. Um, Let's talk about Bruno Fernandes then. Harry Maguire we'll talk about in a moment. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, according to Sky Sports, demanding that, that Edward would get that deal over the line. But apparently with Leicester, there's still an ocean between what United are offering and what not. But with regards to Bruno Fernandes, it was an interesting day yesterday. And if, if you look at the hotter meter on the left, the, hot, the way the hotter meter works is all summer I've had the, the Goldbridge hotter meter there. Out of 10, I'll rank the top seven players that I think are likely to come to United at any given time. As you can see, Maguire, 9 out of 10, 90% chance. Bruno Fernandes, at the start of the week, I had at 90%. I'm not going to lose sight of the fact that I still think Bruno Fernandes to United is realistic. I'm not as confident I was at the start of the week. I don't like the fact that it appears United have leaked to the press that we're not interested. So I've dropped it down to 70%. But I've always said, I will go down with this ship, as the great Dido once sang. And I will go down with this ship. I will not put my hand up and surrender. Um, <laughs> I'm singing the lyrics to the song. Um, but no, look, I've, if I have to sing with, with ship Bruno Fernandes, I'm happy to go down with it. Because I think he's so significant, so important to Manchester United. And I don't understand why we'd move away from that deal so I am just hoping that the things I've heard around all, all summer around United what I was told back in March I'm hoping we're going to stay the course of a football club and sign a player that would be very significant for us and vastly improve us in that weak midfield area in relation to the depth we have so I'm going to stick that we're still going to do the deal and I'm going to hope that a lot of what United are releasing is about trying to drive that price down as we approach the end of the transfer window. Manchester United need to sign a midfielder. Bruno Fernandes is the perfect midfielder for us. Milinkovic Savic, as you can see there, look, I think Paddy Power have got us 1 to 14 on, which is basically we've signed Milinkovic Savic. The Italian reports are very convinced that Manchester United are going to sign Milinkovic Savic. And I just wonder. If there is anything in this, I'm still earing towards the, 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 the caution that I don't think there is. But if there is, have we suddenly changed our opinion to go and get Milinkovic Savage and keep Pogba? Or is he the replacement for Pogba? And as I said last night on Twitter, what I find really interesting is Bruno Fernandes was scouted all of last season by Manchester United and it was a priority signing going into the summer. Where, however high priority you can guess for yourselves. But he was a priority signing for United. He was certainly on the list. Um... For United to park that deal and go and get Milinkovic-Savic would be odd. And I like Milinkovic-Savic, he's a very good player. But what I'm saying is, Milinkovic-Savic was a Jose Mourinho target a year ago. How weird would it be for United to put a lot of time into Bruno Fernandes, looking like they're going to sign him, move away from that deal to go and get a Mourinho target. And, it's, and if that happens, and we don't get Fernandes, but we get Milinkovic-Savic and we keep Pogba, that to me looks like... Well, who's in charge of transfers here then? Is Ed Woodward making decisions here? Because Woodward would have been looking at Milinkovic-Savic with Mourinho a year ago, and then a year later, we go and sign that player. Is, Malin is, is Woodward and whoever's in charge of the board going, no, we don't think Bruno Fernandes is a good signing. We're going to get Milinkovic-Savic in instead. And that 
in, in, in many ways, is quite a scary proposition. But let's wait and see what's ha what happens with that. I'm still hopeful on Bruno. Um, with regards to Harry Maguire, it was coming out after the game yesterday from Sky Sports that Oli has said, look, go and get me Harry Maguire. We need to get Harry Maguire. We need a centre-back at Manchester United. I'm still confident we'll do the deal, but I wouldn't be 100% because are United willing to go to the fee that they need to pay? And I think in many ways we do look a little bit stupid, don't we? You know, we're holding out for ridiculous money for Lukaku on one hand, but on the other hand, we won't pay the going rate for Harry Maguire. And I say the going rate, I'm bored of saying this. He is, um, Van Dijk went for 75 million. He's English. He's Premier League proven. He's got to be worth around 80 million pounds. Whether you agree with that or not, he has to be in today's market. So why are United not offering that money? Because I think Leicester would be more than happy to take that. But at some point, I think over the next week or two, we will be announcing Harry Maguire, which uh, which which we which which which, which, would, which would be nice to do. Um, we spoke about Pepe, we spoke about Milinkovic Savic, we spoke about Fernandez, um, and we've spoken about um, well, look, when's Lukaku going to happen to Manchester United? I mean, I think that is quite interesting and whether Lukaku ends up staying at United. I think in many ways, if Manchester United kept Romelu Lukaku, it would be quite a sad situation out in John. It's a sad, sad situation. And it's come more and more absurd. Rubbish singing there. But um, no, look, if we don't, if Lukaku ends up staying, I think it's sad for everybody. It's sad for Lukaku because he wants to go. It's sad because Inter Milan want him. And it's sad for Manchester United because what we've seen with James and Rashford and um, Martial and Greenwood and even Lingard to a certain extent even though he's not played that well we have seen pace we, and manoeuvrability maneuver, quick movement of the ball alright some of them haven't played that well at times but they're all capable of doing that you think about the way United's front three have played on pre-season and then you drop Lukaku into that you lose straight away you know it's like a tractor coming to get the ball and turning and knocking it off Without Lukaku, with Lukaku, you've got to play Lukaku. And I think that stunts what we're trying to grow as a team. And look, I don't want Alexis Sanchez to stay, but Alexis Sanchez does have a good touch of the ball. He can pass and move. So he'd be far more suitable for our front three at the moment than Lukaku would. So hopefully we'll see him move on. Interestingly, there was discussion yesterday about Moussa Dembele. Sky Sports talking about Moussa Dembele, the Leon striker again, being a replacement for Lukaku. I mean, look, somewhere along the line, we've got to accept that 80% of these stories at the moment are total and utter nonsense. There's no way we're signing Musa Dembele, Nicola Pepe, Bruno Fernandes, Harry Maguire and Milinkovic Savic. We'll be lucky to get two of those. I don't think we're going in for Musa Dembele. I've spoken about this for all summer. Leon will not sell, I believe, more than three players. And they've already sold Fekir, uh, Mendy and Dembele. So I don't see Musa Dembele leaving Leon. I really, really don't. So I just think that's being thrown around because I think if you are a news outlet, you, you know that Manchester United's stories sell. United are trying to sell Lukaku. Who will they replace him with? Because it's boring to say they won't replace him with anybody. But I think that's the truth. I don't think we necessarily do need to replace him with anybody. Um, if you look on the hotter meter, looking at other players on there, I mean, Longstaff is dropped a little bit as well. I think he was up to 80% at one time. He's down to 60%. Steve Bruce has said he doesn't want to sell him. Um, look, whether United can get him out of there. I think the problem with Sean Longstaff in a sentence is United really want him. They've scouted him and they've obviously highlighted a player there that they think can become one of the best midfielders in England. But unfortunately, he's only played nine games for, for, for Newcastle. If, it's Declan, if, if he's had a whole season in the Premier League like Declan Rice and Newcastle say we'll sell for 50 million, you can sort of justify that. But you can't, you can't justify spending 30 million on a player that's played nine games. But from Newcastle's point of view, they're like, he's under contract. We know he's going to be a good player. We know in a year's time with a season with us, he probably will be worth 50 million. Why would we sell him now for 25 million? So maybe it's a deal that can't be done because United would be paying ridiculous money for a person who's got nine games and is just potential. But we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. Uh, Cooley Barley, look, if, if if we got Cooley Barley, great. But I, I don't see us swerving from Maguire, to be honest. I know people, I've read that if United don't get Maguire, they'll go for Cooley Barley. I mean, it really is like saying, I'm going to drive, I'm, I want to buy that Mini from the next door neighbour, but if they don't sell it me, I'm going to buy a Ferrari. You know, it doesn't make sense. So I don't think that. Gareth Bale's obviously around 30% chance of coming to United and Ben Yedder as well. Look, I don't see, I don't think that United will go for Gareth Bale. I think if, if this transfer window was in May now, we would be, and we had all these stories around, we would be quite encouraged with three months to go. Maybe we could do this, maybe we could do that. 
we've got to accept that there's only 13 days left in this transfer window and what we can do in 13 days is is limited even if you're an efficient football club what you can do in 13 days when you consider you've got to sign the play you've got to agree the terms you've got to arrange all the publicity I just don't know what United can do I mean Ole Gunnar Solskjaer did say we could still do two deals in and two deals out maybe we could but something's got to happen in the next few days that's for sure and um, I'm not convinced that uh, the way it's going with United at the moment that, that we that we can do that but you know who knows? Who knows? My feeling at the moment, honestly. Um, well, what's your feeling? Get in the comments, actually, because it'd be very interesting to see what you lot are thinking. So get your comments in below. 13 days to go. Unlucky for some. How many deals do you think Manchester United will do? Personally, I think right now I'll stick with Harry Maguire being done, as I've been told. I will stick with Lukaku going because I think that will happen. Um, beyond that, I think you're moving into... You know, predict. I mean, and I've got to stick with Bruno Fernandez, haven't I? I've, I've said it all summer, so I've got to stick with the Bruno Fernandez deal, and I've got to go down with the ship if it doesn't. But it's one-one if Harry Maguire happens, because I did say that three weeks ago. Um, if neither happens, forget about it. I'm not doing transfer shows anymore. Um, so yeah, Harry Maguire to come in, Bruno Fernandez to come in, Lukaku to go out, and Pogba still worries me. Watch this space with Paul Pogba, people. Like, really, seriously. I, surely he's going to stay now, but why do we think he's going to stay? Maybe he's just gone on the tour to keep everybody happy. If he goes, oh, how do you do the replacement of Pogba as well and do five deals? So I, I don't know. I think the three, I'm confident about Maguire. I'm confident about Lukaku going. Bruno Fernandes, I'm just being stubborn on. And then I don't know. I don't know what, what else will be done, but we're definitely running out of time, aren't we? Anyway, please do smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Very, 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 um, uh, just keep an eye out. Keep an eye out on the United stand today. Got a few surprises for you coming up, probably around this afternoon, early evening. Um, pineapple, keep out an eye out. Anyway, subscribe, smash a like on the video, and obviously if anything happens, we will go live. I think we're moving into that territory now. I don't know when United do get back from the tour, but we don't go to Norway till Tuesday. We're back in Europe now. After Norway, we're back in the UK because we've got that Cardiff game on the Saturday. So... I'm intrigued as to what Manchester United are going to do over the next few days and I think we will do something next week, surely. You can't leave it all till the last week, so let's see what happens. Let's stay positive. Are you positive? Get in the comments. What deals do you think United are going to do in and out in the next 13 days? Thanks for watching. I'll speak to you all soon.